I welcome you and thank you everyone for joining this class. We have a few topic uh, left in uh, the warehouse management. So we'll try to wrap it up as much as possible um, in the warehouse management topic. So thank you all. Thank you everyone. So let us recap. So in the last class which we had we talked about how do we do the integration of warehouse management with the quality management so that was the last exercise which we did we verify the config of WMQM interface we create a material with the QM view because in order to do WM and QM view we need to have a QM information in the material master and then uh, we create a guru seat we create a transfer order, we confirm transfer order, and then we post usage decision. So that is what basically we did in the last class. So now today's topic is about something called internal procurement processes. This is basically integration of warehouse management with production planning. That is why it is called internal procurement. So wherever we talk about internal procurement, we are talking about manufacturing and the production functions. So what are the prerequisite in internal procurement process? We'll talk about there is something called staging. Staging basically means when we take the material from the warehouse and we stage onto production side. That is called staging then how do we map the procurement processes in SAP? then we talk about what is the master data which is required for the staging process so that will be another thing which we will be discussing and talking in this session so we'll talk about uh, integration of warehouse management with the pp so this is called wmpp interface now, if you see here, there is something, there are two ways we can do staging. Staging means keeping the material in the production area from the warehouse for manufacturing consumption. That is called staging. So staging of component without, without WMPP interface. And the second is with WMPP. PP interface. So these are the two different ways we can do the WMPP interface. Uh, we can supply the material from warehouse to production in two different ways. So one of them, one of them is basically using WM and PP interface and one without WM PP interface. So we'll talk about both. Next is the putting away the uh, finished good. Putting away basically means how can we uh, uh, do the guru seat of the product which is we manufacture. So when finished goods are manufactured, then how can we do the putting away of that uh, in warehouse? So that is a putting away. Setting up WMPP interface, how WMPP interface can be set it up. So we talk about that as well. So what the usage of WMPP interface, functions of WMPP interface, we'll talk about. And prerequisite, prerequisite basically means there are certain configuration steps. So we will also look at configuration also. Oops. Um, there's something problem. Is can you guys hear my voice? Or case the party? Ah, G. But the rest of the people are able to join. 
Yeah, I have uh, quite a few people who joined the class. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you, thank you. Yes, please, okay. <clears throat> okay, so let us continue. So we're talking about WM and PP interface. Interface. So what is the WPP interface and how does this work? So here, now look at this example here. So this, let's look at this picture. This picture basically describes staging material staging without WMPP interface. Now what is the meaning of it? Meaning of is how can we send the material from warehouse to production without using WMPP interface. So staging means sending the material from warehouse to production area for potential production consumption. So that process basically works goods issue for work order. So step number one that we do goods issue against it, work order. We have done this before. So if you go to Migo, for example, so we have done Migo before. We have done Migo in different ways. We have done good issue multiple different ways. So if you see a good issue here, so here in the good issue, you can do with the purchase order. And one of them here, here is order. So this is the goods issue against order. So I can put my production order and against that production order, we can basically supply the material to production area from the warehouse. Movement type for that is 221. If we do that, then what happens? If we do that, then system credit transfer requirement, as we did uh, many exercise before, then uh, system uh, create uh, uh, transfer order, which we can confirm transfer order. This is the same process. So this is the same step, same process as we do multiple times. Then uh, then next on the slide number 123, this is different. Now what we have on this slide. So on this slide, we have a material staging with the WMPP interface. Now what is this really means? So this basically means that we can create a production order. Now we have not created production order, we're gonna create production order, okay? So when we get a production order, is my voice coming to everyone? Can everybody hear my voice? Just wanna confirm. Can you say yes and no? Can you say yes and no? Is my voice coming to you all? Okay, wonderful, thank you. Just want to confirm. Now this is uh, on the slide number 123, we have a material staging with the WMPP interface. So here what happens? So here we have something called production order. And then when we do the production order, along with the production order and from the production order, system trigger a transfer requirement. Now, see the difference. In this case, transfer requirement come from the production order. So this process differs. So process become different. So here, with the production order, we can take a transfer requirement. And with the reference to transfer requirement, we can create a transfer order. Okay. And then once the transfer requirement is created, then we confirm the creation of the transfer order. And then we do the staging. And in the last, we do the goods issue. 
in the last flow process is starts with the goods issue now here process ends with the goods issue so the process get different reversed okay understand the difference That is the material staging with WMPP interface. That is the exercise we will try to do. Then this is the put away with the finish code. So finally, production completes. When manufacturing is completed, the finished good produced, then that finished good will come from production area to warehouse. For that, we do good receipt. So raw material will go from warehouse to production area finished good will come from production area to warehouse and in that we will do guru seat so if you see the for the finished good there is a guru seat now this is the regular guru seat as we have done multiple times so here in this guru seat and this is the guru seat against work order or production order same if you go to migo and if you go to guru seat which you have used many times. So you can do Guru Seed with the different uh, references. One of them is purchase order. And then second one, and the next one is the order. So we can do order. Yes, hello. Yes. Good evening. What's your name, please? Monday, okay. Monday, I'm in the class right now. Do you want me to ask Mohit to give you a call? I'm in the class right now, unfortunately. You, you can call me tomorrow morning. Yeah, welcome. Okay. So here we do guru seat, reference purchase order, and then we have an order. So this is basically doing a guru seat with reference to production order. Okay. So that is what we do as a part of, and this is the same thing. Okay. And that is what this basically means. And then this is the same flow, which is guru seat. And then when we do guru seat, we create a transfer requirement. With the transfer requirement, we create a transfer order. Then with the transfer order, we do the confirmation. And these are the steps we have done multiple, multiple time. We have done guru seat with the multiple time. Okay, so this is the same step, same process this is not different now we go to the next one configuration so in the configuration there are certain steps those configuration steps should be there which we need to do That is what we are talking about here. Now let us understand this. We go to configuration and we're going to check this configuration. So we go to SPRO. We go to SAP reference IMT. And then we go to logistic execution. And uh, warehouse management.
and then here we have interfaces and here in the interfaces we have a defined production that is what we see here defined production so if we see that logistic execution warehouse management interfaces defined production then we have a defined production okay. if you go to define production these are the different areas within the production this is what we see here maintain assign general pp wm storage type That is what we see here. Okay, so here, the very first thing which we see is production supply area. So we can configure as many production supply areas as possible. So we put the plant letter say 1000. So here we can define production supply area. Now, what is production supply area? Production supply area basically area where material is being kept for a period of time before it get consumed into production so we send raw material from the warehouse to the production so when we send it to the production where it is kept so it is kept in production supply area so we can define so this plant we have all these different you can configure pradeep or mansoor or madan or whatever or faisal these are the created by different people so that basically means you can configure as many as you want it's just a go to new entry you can create then there is a movement type okay now we go to the movement type so first thing which we have to understand that <coughs> im or wm everything is controlled by movement type so for a wmpp interface also there is a movement type so we have looked at many many different type of movement type 101, 201, 301, 501, and all that, and all that. Now, if you see here, there is a moment type. You see that? 319. So, first and foremost, there is something called interim storage area 100. So, what is 100? So, 100 is interim storage area for production. So that production area in the warehouse perspective is called 100. 100 is a standard interim storage area. And in order to make WM and PP interface work, there is a movement type 319. 319 is a standard movement type for WM PP interface. So that movement type should be assigned to your warehouse and to your 100. 100 is interim storage area for WM PP interface so like uh, we have talked about different uh, store, interim storage area 902 and 916 and all that so 100 is for the purpose of wmpp interface general um, nothing really much here and uh, we go to production Now, here, if you look at the plant, there is something called production scheduling profile. Now, this product scheduling profile is needed. So, for the plant, we need to have a production scheduling profile. This production scheduling profile must be assigned to the material master. In the material master, in MRP production views, there is a field called production scheduling profile. Now, there are several uh, things here, but one thing which we care about is if you scroll down, there is something called WM request. So, creation of transfer order on release 
that basically means when we release production order then system created transfer requirement because of this checkbox system is creating transfer requirement now once the transfer requirement is created then the step next step is say when you get transfer requirement then you confirm transfer requirement and then uh, you, uh, you transfer requirement then you create a transfer order and with the transfer order you confirm transfer order so those steps remain the same so those steps does not change okay. those step does not change so there is a x here only creation of the transfer requirement on release that is what this basically means okay so that is the configuration i wanted to show you that is the configuration you have on this slide then uh, this is what we look at production supply area that is what in the configuration we saw we there is something called control cycle control cycle is a master data that control cycle master data should have been maintained for WMPP interface to work. So only if this WMPP interface is active, we can use WMPP interface. So this control cycle is required. This control cycle is mandatory step in SAP for WMPP interface to work. Now here in the control cycle, we have a different type of control cycle. Now see the staging indicator. Now look at the word here called staging indicator. A staging indicator basically means what type of staging is being performed. Now there is a, no staging. So there are certain part for them. We don't need to do any staging. Pick part. Pick part basically means components which are specific to the production order. That is called pick part. Then we have a crate part. Okay. Crate part means the part which can be used in multiple production order. So pick part, part which are specific to that order. Then we have a crate part. Crate part basically means part which can go to the multiple production order. Then there is a release part. Release part basically means the part which can be used in any production order. Manual staging basically means those part are manually transferred from warehouse to production area. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is production scheduling profile we saw in the configuration. Oops. Where you can have a plant and for the plant you can production scheduling profile. We have an indicator and the transfer requirement get created on the basis of releasing the production order. Okay. That's what it means. Now there is a small checkbox and using that checkbox. Um, for WM, there is you see the PP interface active. If this checkbox is on, then WM PP interface is active. If this is not on, then WM PP interface is not active. So if you go to warehouse number here, and if you see that for this warehouse, for example, there is a PP interface active. It's just a checkbox. If this checkbox is on, then interface is on. If this checkbox is not on then interface is not on. So that is what this basically means. Okay. 
that is what we see here. So that is, uh, we have done internal procurement processes for WM issues. And uh, now, okay, let's go back. Now I go to production, for example. So we look at the configuration. Now I want to go to production. And let us say, I want to create a production order. So we go to logistic, we go to production. order create transaction code co01 so co01 is a transaction code for creating production order so we go to co01 and uh, we hit it now in the material i would like you guys to make a note of that material t-ms.06 now why this material because in order for the production order to be completed, there are a lot of different dependent data like routing, like bill of material. So all that production related data is maintained into it. So we don't need to get bogged down into something not relevant for us, our purpose. So this is a standard SCP provided material. So in the training environment, these different materials has been provided for the purpose of executing those transactions that is what this basically means okay so we're gonna use this material and then we go to planning plant order type pp01 hit enter we can put some quantity we can put uh, a start date, end date, whatever. So this is the, we are putting here, hit enter. Now see the message in the bottom, copy routing, copy routing 53500, copy bomb. You see that all? Is schedule order is scheduling carried out so all these different data has been defined so for this material this is quantity this is uh, MRP controller this is my plant we go to go receipt there is a store location 0106 control data now here, if you go, there is a, see the operation overview. Now, if you go to operation overview, then it will give you routing. This is there because this material is a pump. If you're manufacturing this pump, then there's a operation one, operation two, operation, this is operation one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the routing. First, you will do this. First, second, you do this, this. And then if you come back here, and then there is also a, you see this bill of material. So that bomb is also created. So if this is the material, and this is my, in middle of this flywheel, this hollow shaft, this is the wall bearing, this pressure case, bearing case, whatever. So all the data is there. We save it. So, So see the message in the bottom. Production order 6003678 created. So we have learned how to create a production order. After creating production order, next thing which we do, and here we have something called release production order. We can close, close we can click on it, and then release carried out, and then we save button. And do you want to still save? Yes. So order has been saved. We can go to display. 
and uh, when we go to display we can see that now production order is in the release status and then we can see different things and there is a different uh, overview log and okay now after that we go to uh, our uh, logistic execution so we create a production order we release production order then we go to transfer requirement display by requirement type lb30 here i put my warehouse number so 106 requirement type p p for production and give me all transfer requirement which is partially delivered completed open and hit it so these are all different transfer requirement which has been created and see in the bottom there is a 6000 this was the production order we created today so this is transfer requirement number 112 there is a moment type 319 because remember we talk about moment type 319 and then this created transfer requirement now this transfer requirement number 112 got created from this production order 6000 is our production order now we have created transfer requirement for material movements good receipt good issues and all that this is the transfer requirement which has been created directly from production order if you select that here if you go to the details we can see that also in the further details that this is a transfer requirement 1102 moment of three time this is replenished for production this is the production order number 100 remember interim storage area 100 number of item which we have is four there are four uh, 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 items in uh, transfer requirement created by this user created on this date 526 so today is 526 so this is created this transfer requirement is created by a wmpp interface because we want to test our wmpp interface then uh, this is the plant issue this basically means this is the production gonna finish time date reservation number now remember we talk about reservation and see that reservation six nine seven seven nine six if you remember we did a topic of reservation in that we create a reservation manually and then we do a good issue with the reservation also now what happens is in case of wmpp interface also in order to reserve the material for production reservation get created automatically this is an example of creation of reservation automatically and reservation number is 69796 and requirement type so that is what we have okay, we select that and then uh, select all we can deselect and choose and here we have a to and foreground remember same way we talked about to and foreground so same way we can create a transfer order so there is a moment type 319 this is a storage is a 100 p means production against this production order number it was uh, supposed to be finished tomorrow and in this transfer requirement we have uh, this material we have uh, this material this is third material the fourth material one 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 piece of this material is required and then after that is same we create a transfer order confirm transfer order and all that so what we did so in wmpp so in wmpp interface exercise we did uh, we verify config so 
So what is the moment I, what is intermediate area, et cetera, so that we verify, we verify PSA, we verify scheduling profile, et cetera. So all those different things we have verified. Then another thing which we did is basically we created a production order. So we went to production order. And the transaction code was CO01. And we um, released production order in the transaction code CO02. And then we verify PR from production using transaction code LV. So this is our exercise for WM and PP interface. Okay. Now we go to the next topic, and that is the physical inventory. Now we did physical inventory topic in IM also. So when we did inventory management. At that time also, we did physical inventory process. Physical inventory process in IM and WM is similar. Process is similar. Transaction code and all that is obviously different because of different T codes. But when we look at uh, the, the process, it's same. Only difference is in IM, you're doing in a store location. In WM, you're doing a warehouse in a bin. The how three-step process remain constant in IM and W. So we're going to talk about carrying out physical inventory in the warehouse. Same process. So physical inventory process, which is same in talking IM also, where we verify that what is my book saying and what I have is same or not same. How do you do physical inventory in warehouse? And some of the customization step, which is related to warehouse. So these are the three things. Now, physical inventory process, again, three-step process. In IM also, WM also. Step number one, you create a physical inventory document. So step number one, we create a physical inventory document. Step number two, once we do that, then we verify that we enter the count. Okay, we find this much. And then we analyze, okay, we find same or more or less, and then we settle those. Um, settle those changes okay that is what this basically means then physical mid process in warehouse so the first periodic process periodic as the name suggests we are doing in certain period once in a week once in a month so periodic perpetual perpetual basically means you are doing daily basis perpetual means daily then you have a cycle count. Cycle count basically means the same thing we talk in IM also. These concepts are the same on IM and WM. Cycle count, you're doing on the basis of ABC parameter. Class A material, we're doing more often. Class C material, we're doing once in a year. Okay, this is cheap material, low cost material, we can do once in a year. But it's a costly material, we should do once in a, we should do every, every month. So we can choose like how often we do this uh, material. Okay. And then we have a sample. Sample, not many people use because it's not a full uh, uh, inventory. So, what we do in case of sample, that uh, we verify, you know, large quantum, like we have millions and millions of pieces. Now, if you have millions of pieces, you cannot verify and count everyone. It's not possible. So, you can take a sample of it and you count and what are the result come, you extrapolate to the rest of inventory, that is the sample. In uh, WM, there are a few other additional concepts. So first is annual inventory. If you see that annual inventory, annual inventory basically means the inventory which you are doing once in a year. So most people, let's say on 31st December, 
last day or last two days, last three days, we are basically doing physical mentoring. Continuous, we talked about perpetual, means we are doing daily basis. Cycle count, we talked about, we are doing based upon ABC parameter. Um, the material which is costly, we are doing more offer. Material which is least costly, we are doing least offer. So, class C material, probably because they are low value item, we can do once in a year. It doesn't make a difference because they are, these materials are very, not very costly. Then we have inventory of the first put away during put away. First put away basically means when I'm keeping this material in this bin for the first time. And because I'm doing for the first time, therefore, that material should not be there. So that is the visual physical invention. I can say, yep, it is not there. So we do two purposes that we are doing a guru seat also, put away also. Along with that, we are doing a visual in inspection. We verifying that bin does not have any stock of the same item because it is first time we are doing the guru seat of this item in this bin. The second is a zero stock check. Zero stock check basically means that in the bin, let us say we have a 50 pieces. If the 50 pieces, I remove 50 out of 50, then I should left with a zero. And if I left with a zero, then we're doing two things together. One, we are doing good issue. Secondly, we are also verifying the stock of the material. So both things are being done simultaneously. And then sample base we talked about. Now, this is the process. This is the process in IM, which we already did when we're talking about IM topic, when create a physical document, we can block movement of during the physical process, we can print physical inventory document, we can count and measure which is actual counting and measure, may, weighing and counting. And then enter the count result. And then the last clear differences in IM. So these are the step at name. Second one is here is in the W. So in the W, process is same. Okay. Create physical memory document. Then you activate physical memory document. When you activate physical memory document, then we, uh, the storage bin get blocked. Then we print physical memory document if you want to. And then uh, basically we do the counting measuring, we verify. So these steps are same. Now, if you see in the bottom, there's a clear difference in WM and IM. Now this step is extra here because IM and WM both inventory should be constant. So IM cannot say 100 and WM can say 50 because both has to be same. Therefore, the settlement of the differences, you will do both places in IM also and WM also. Why that is the case? So IM and WM inventory can be in the sink. So both inventory should be similar. Both inventory cannot be different. And for that purpose, we can have same inventory on both sides. So that is why we have a killer differences in IM and W. So these are the transaction. This is LI01, LI02, LI04, LI11, LI20, LI21. So these are different transaction codes. And we're going to use these transaction codes. That is what we're going to do our exercise. OK, so let's do our next exercise, which is physical physical inventory exercise. So in that verify material in WM because there should be some good movement, material should be there with the WM and all that. So we can uh, take some material in the past. So we have this material which we used 33789. So we go back and let's check the stock first and foremost. So we go to LS24 and uh, we put uh, our warehouse. I think uh, this was the warehouse by 64. And then we enter the material number and then we hit enter. Yeah, so this was our warehouse Y64, and uh, this material 33789 
um, is there in all these different ways. So we have 36 pieces here, 99 pieces here. And so, okay, so this material is there with us. And then we open another session here. Now, I want to go to logistics. I want to go to logistic execution. And I want to go to internal warehouse processes. Then we go to physical inventory. IM we have done already. So we go to warehouse management. And here in the warehouse management, we do physical material document, create LI01. So we're doing first step, which is create physical inventory document. You're creating a PI doc, transaction code LI01. So this is the LI01N. So we put our warehouse number and we put our storage type, let us say 001. So we are doing a physical inventory in this warehouse and this is storage type. This is plan date when we want to do it. Hit enter. Now, because it is a physical inventory in the warehouse, that is where we enter the bin number. Okay, so we, we have to select the bins, which bins we want. So here, so these are the different bins which is there for this material, 1114, 1115. Okay, we can select for the material. So we can, uh, so we can select storage bin for the material. So we can put a material number. So I think this is the material number. So we can see that for this material number, what are the bits? We go back here. Okay. So this material, 33789, in this warehouse, in this storage type, with this is there in these bits, seven bits. Oh, we select one of them. We can select multiple also. And we hit enter. And we select. So see the message in the bottom. Physical inventory record one created. Okay. After that, we go to the change, LI02. When I go to LI02 in physical inventory document, hit enter. And we select this item. And here you see this activate. We are doing these steps actually. Activate. So we are doing activate. Activate basically means I have planned this uh, physical inventory. Now activating, which basically means I'm doing it. See that message activating physical memory document. So the next one is activate physical inventory doc, which is transaction code LI02N. Now, one thing which I want to verify after creating physical limited document. So this was the situation we had. This is a stop. Okay, we go back, come back again. You see, there is an X here. What is this X? We click on it. And now see here, blocking region, inventory, plan, red color, physical limited is active. So that bin get blocked. And why it is blocked? Because it's blocked for physical inventory. System knows that there is a physical inventory in this warehouse for this storage type in this bin. Okay. So, red color. Activate physical inventory. We can verify in blocking. So, we can see that bin is blocked. Now, what are the next steps? So we did that. After that, we go back, create a physical movie document. Then we count result. How much we found? We go to LI. So now we count result, enter. So entering the count result, enter.
Enter the count result is transaction code LI11N. So we go to LI11N and uh, I put in inventory record number one. And then we say counted quantity. How much is the counted quantity? Okay, so let's go back. So currently I have um, 36 pieces. Okay, so because I have 36 pieces, so what I wanna do, I say, okay, I find 35. I found one piece less. Example, we could have a less also, more also. Hit enter. And then we save it. So what we did, inventory count ended. So we go back again, enter the count. Now we have a killer differences. Killer difference in WM and IM. LI20, LI21. Because we have a IM and WM inventory constant on both sides. So we go back. And after that, we go to the third step, which is clear differences. And clear differences, we first do WM and then IM. So both inventory in this line. We go to warehouse number, inventory count, hit enter. We select this material. And then we say write down. So we say 10 pieces. Right. $10. Now see that it says one bin cleared so what we did enter count that was li 20 uh, 11n and we cleared differences clear differences as we at wm label transaction code li 20 now i want to verify bin stock go back and verify bin stock which is ls so we go back we save it now i want to go back to the bin so here we had a 36 pieces we have a x we go back we go back in now we have a 35 that x is gone now it is no more blocked so after putting the uh, clarification the bin blocking region is not there red color is gone now that 35 is hang uh, so it was 36 become 35 now but that one piece is lying here in 999 999 is intermediate storage area for differences so it is there but it's lying into 999 so now we have to clear on where it when it will go clear out when we clear into IM also. So we go to LI21. So we go to LI21. And here we put a storage type 9999. 99 is a intermediate storage area for differences. So we go there. We hit enter. We hit execute. So in this warehouse, for this storage type, in this bin, for this material, in this plant, in this store location, we have one PB active. This is Gurusi date. We select that. And then here, if you go to more, then here we can say uh, one of the things is write off. Now see here, material document created. So verify at IM label and that is the transition code LI21 and then verify serial doc because whenever you have a, any change in inventory there is inventory document always right. And then we're going to verify bin stock. It's LS24. Okay. So now, so here we have physical inventory document. We click on it. So now in the physical inventory, system will tell you in this date by this user, this material one quantity minus different because one quantity got reduced we found one piece less 
moment type 711. So anything we do in IM and WM, any good moment, there is a moment type. 711 is a moment type for goods issue. When we did an IM, there were moment type 701, 702. In WM, there is a 711, 712. Okay, understand the difference. Now there is a counting document also because inventory has been reduced. So because inventory has been reduced, so there is also an accounting document also. So there is a material document and also there is a accounting document because inventory get reduced. So here we can double click on it. And we can check that also. So there is an accounting document also. So we can verify material document and also accounting document. But there is impact on the inventory also. And there is impact on finance also because there is a value. Because there is a value, so system basically reduce value also okay that is what this basically means <clears throat> make a note of all these steps so it's easy to follow okay so we go back so there is an inventory, raw material inventory is credited $10 because one piece, it was one piece and one piece is for $10 and it go to inventory loss account because this is a loss to the inventory. Now, the last step in this is inventory. We go to check verify stock. We had a one piece lying in 999. Now it should go away. We go back, go back in. There is no 99. It clear out. So my inventory is cleared in IM and WM and that is the physical inventory process in WM. We have done physical inventory exercise in IM. Now this is an example of doing physical inventory process in WM. That is what is exercise step which is here as well. Okay. Customization for physical inventory. So there is a simple configuration uh, for uh, the configuration also for uh, for the purpose of uh, physical inventory. So let me show you that as well, the where it is. So we go to, um, for example, configuration. So I go to SPRO, SAP reference IMG. And when I go to SAP reference IMG, then we go to um, logistic execution. And uh, we go to warehouse management. And then we go to activities. And then we go to physical inventory. And here we would define default values, define type per storage type. That basically means how, what kind of uh, physical inventory we can define by storage type. We click on it. So this is basically activation of different physical inventory methods for our warehouse and storage type. So that is what this basically means. Okay, so here, let us select any value, for example, this one. So what this says that in this warehouse, in this storage type, there is an inventory PZ, PZ. PZ basically means continuous inventory. So we can do continuously anytime, any day, every day. Then there is something called placement inventory. When you place the material, then system is going to check. Zero check inventory, we talk about zero check in. Zero, zero stock check. When you remove everything, becomes zero. Then system verifies cycle count. If you want to do cycle count, so these are the physical inventory methods 
which has been assigned to this storage type in this web. It's simple checkboxes, really nothing complicated about it. That is what we see here on this screen. Okay. Now, after that, the next topic and the last topic. There is something called warehouse activity monitor. This warehouse activity monitor is nothing but a report. What does it do? As the name suggests, warehouse activity monitor. It allows you to monitor different activities within the warehouse. So it does, uh, what is the function of warehouse activity monitor? Reporting various functions in the warehouse. Then we have activity VAM object. So whether we want this activation or not, that also we can activate. That is what this basically means. We can activate if you want to. Monitoring parameter. Monitoring parameter basically means what is the status of our warehouse? What is the status of the warehouse in terms of different warehouses? That is what this basically means. Okay, monitoring object. So there is a, if you go to information system, warehouse LL01, LL01 is a transaction code. By doing this transaction code, we can verify the warehouse activity monitor. Let's do that. So if you go back, if you go back, and uh, if you go to here information system warehouse and here we have warehouse activity monitor transaction code ll01 so ll01 is a transaction code for creating for running this report so ll01 is nothing but a report that is what it does okay it verify the report ll01 we're going to run this report also. That is what is shown here. So here, warehouse activity monitor, what kind of objects you can check? So this is in configuration. So now we go to configuration also. It's a very simple report actually, nothing really complex about it. So if you go to warehouse, so if you see here, um, warehouse activity monitor, this is basically the various element which is there in the configuration. Okay, let's check that. Where is this in configuration? So we go to reference IMG and we go to uh, logistic execution. We go to warehouse management. We are in configuration now, right? Yeah. And here we have a uh, planning and monitoring. And here we have a warehouse activity monitor. And here we have a activate warehouse activity monitor. It's a very simple configuration actually. So we click on it. And uh, so these are the different, uh, if you see this, different objects. So these are the different objects you can verify. Unconfirmed transport. How many transport orders there which is not confirmed? How many open transfer requirements are there? How many open posting chain notices are there? How many critical deliveries are there which is not delivered yet? Okay. How many other negative stocks? How many intermistress area? How many critical stock item in the production? So, because if let us say you have an open transfer requirement or you have an open transfer order which is never confirmed, you will not like that. So you will have to keep monitoring on a periodic basis that how many such transfer requirement, transfer order deliveries are there where all different functions related to warehouse has not yet been completed. And in those cases, we can use warehouse activity monitor. We're going to run this report also. 
So this is the one thing. So for your warehouse, these objects should be defined. So we have seven object. Second, if you go to critical parameter, so critical parameter basically means that when this become critical, So that is the about that how soon and when this object become critical. So if you see that here, hour, if this much time a parameter goes, this become critical. Then posting change requirement. How much time it goes, it become requirement, critical. So because let us say if it is less than one hour, we don't care. But if it's not been confirmed within one hour or two hour or three hour, then it become critical. So that we can define that at what frequency this become critical. So that is the simple configuration. So we go back. Now, how do we run this report? It's a very simple actually. So like any report, so LL01 is a T code. If we click on it and uh, we can put uh, Warehouse number. So this is my warehouse number. I hit execute and I can put my moment type. Okay. From this moment type to this moment type, I can put a which is to location to which is to location. So I can put uh, that also like which is storage type to which is storage type. And then we'd hit, hit execute. Now everything is green, green, green. Nothing is critical in our case. So that is how a simple report like warehouse activity monitor can be created. So that is the last topic and uh, thank you very much for joining the session and uh, if you have any question let me know. Obviously you can call me as well during the call and all that. So with that thank you for joining the session. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye for now.